So um, I didn't come prepared to talk about hackerspaces, but uh, I just, uh, while other people were talking, gave a, uh, a truncated version of this TEDx Brussels talk that I gave on hackerspaces. <clears throat> so I couldn't help but notice that there's not a hackerspace in Novi Sad. Uh, I would love to help change that. So uh, I want to inspire people here to try to join with people who have an idea of starting a hackerspace here, because everyone coming together, it can happen. It will happen. That's the way hackerspaces start. So um, um, a hackerspace is sort of like BulkCon, except that it's not once a year. It's all day, every day, all year round, a place you can go to, a physical place where you can get together with people who are exploring and doing what they love, like here, people sharing their projects. It's really high when people are mostly doing what they really, really love doing, as opposed to, unfortunately, the world at large where it's not everyone doing what they love. It's so many people just doing whatever they think they have to do to get by. It's not very high, unfortunately, when the world is full of people like that. But we can create these little pockets of places where people are exploring and doing what they love, and it's really high, like BalkCon. But imagine if there was a place in your hometown where you could go whenever the hell you felt like it, and meet with other introverted geeks and learn and teach and share. That's what a hackerspace is all about. So um, each hackerspace is unique. It's a place where community flourishes, where there's local economy based quite often from the hackerspace, and real education where all of the community is benefiting from what hackerspace, your hackerspace, has to offer. Um, so let's see, I went over that. Hacking, as uh, I define it, of what I do and what we do pretty much at all hackerspaces, is taking anything that exists, using that as a resource, using it even in ways that aren't intended necessarily by the originators of whatever resource you're using, and then using that to improve your projects and sharing it. Everything can be improved, therefore we can hack anything. And we should hack everything because everything should be improved and it's fun to improve things. And when we get together with other people and improve things, our lives get better and everything feels just kind of wonderful. I don't know why more people aren't doing it. People are coming together and that's why there are so many hackerspaces in the world growing so quickly. Um, but we can hack not only tech, computers, electronics, but we can also hack Food, we can hack science, craft, art. You can hack yourself. We can hack society, we can hack the planet. Let's hack the planet. The planet needs hacking. So I've hacked myself. That's another long story I won't go into today. But that led to becoming um, someone who actually loves living my life as opposed to the total depressed blob of a kid and I lived my first half of my life totally depressed. But by doing a whole bunch of hacking on myself, I eventually got to a place where I found a project I love that I make a living from, which is TV Be Gone. It's a keychain that turns TVs off in public places and I encourage everyone to turn TVs off everywhere they go because when TVs turn off, people turn on. It's kind of nice that way. <laughs> you can do that any way you like. So, but um, doing TV Be Gone um, got me in, connected with a whole bunch of different people I probably never would have met. You know, when you do what you love, all sorts of opportunities open up that don't happen when you come home exhausted from a fucking job you don't even like. You're just exhausted and you probably turn on a fucking TV and waste whatever little time you have left in your life. But if you're doing what you love, you're doing all sorts of crazy things like going to hacker conferences and meeting all sorts of amazing geeks who are sharing their projects. This one I went to um, Chaos Communications Camp in 2007 was a turning point in my life. 
I mean, look at all those blinky lights. How could you possibly not love that? And uh, there were all sorts of things happening that would later become part of the hackerspace movement. There were all sorts of people doing what they love and sharing it, teaching it. There were uh, lots of blinky lights. There was also art and science, um, electronics, computers, craft, all sorts of workshops. Of course, there were lots of cool talks, including a talk uh, oh, and also great food. Uh, there was also a talk on how to start your own hackerspace put on by some German hackers who um, researched what worked and what didn't work so well in German hackerspaces for the last almost quarter century up till then. And they wanted to spread the joy. And that inspired me because like all conferences, Chaos Communication Camp, I didn't want that to end, but it did. After it ended, uh, I, that talk about hackerspaces really inspired me to know that it doesn't have to end. It could happen every day, every night, at my hometown all year round. I didn't have to wait for the next hacker conference. So me and my friend Jake started NoiseBridge. We got together with a few people and um, that, uh, and we just did what everyone does when they start um, a hackerspace. Uh, we discussed what we wanted from our community, and um, we talked about it for about a year because we didn't have many examples to draw from, but uh, we got everything together, we rented our first space, five of us just took the plunge and put down the money knowing somehow it would work out. We put out a call for money and within 24 hours we got $12,000 and we've never been in debt since. And we've been flourishing since 2007. It works. Within three weeks we had uh, a full kitchen, a machine shop, an electronics lab, uh, a library, a machine shop, I said that, uh, um, and sewing machines, all sorts of equipment, all of which was donated just from people's garages or people founded on uh, street curbs. And um, yeah, we outgrew our first space in three months and we've been in our second space since. It's been pretty amazing. We just had a successful Indiegogo uh, crowdsourcing campaign to raise money for fixing up the infrastructure, $27,000 raised. People like this shit, you know? They, they donate when they like that. Um, it's just really high. Uh, that's a uh, hackerspace in Belgium that was used in my TEDx Brussels talk. Um, <clears throat> let me show you just a few projects that inspired me visiting hackerspaces and hacker conferences. This is called Der Blinken Lights. People put lights in a window in a building in Germany and it led to uh, open source software being hacked on openly on the internet. Uh, eventually leading to the first two people who called in on their cell phones could play Pong on the building. And that was set up by the uh, Chaos Computer Club, which is well respected in Germany. Uh, that was a government building given to them for th uh, that cool public art project. Um, at Noisebridge, a handful of people decided they wanted to take a snapshot of the planet. So uh, with $250 and in six weeks they put up a, a balloon us uh, into near space and got this photo. It's amazing what you can do when you just have people collaborating together, building on a dream. Here's a dream. Uh, at uh, the last uh, chaos camp, people decided that they would put, uh, there'd be a hackerspace space, space program where we would put a person on the moon by the year 2032. Will it happen? I don't care. The things that will be learned along the way are going to be amazing, and that's, I think, the main thing. And it would be really cool if we could put a person on the moon. When I gave this talk in TEDx Brussels not all that long ago, MakerBot was an open source project which was started at NYC Resistor in New York City, the hackerspace there, the only one at the time. And uh, it was an open source project, a 3D printer that could print out anything in plastic uh, in 3D. And uh, unfortunately, they're no longer open source and it's no longer a place anyone wants to work. But for a long time, it employed up to 200 people who love their jobs. Uh, and it inspired lots of other people to have 3D printer companies. This one's totally silly, but it's a real company. Meat cards. They put meat, uh, dried meat in a laser cutter and print people's business cards on them. 
They did that for themselves, just for fun, but people liked them and now they make a living doing this. Um, so here's a, uh, a robot that's bigger than a car. Many cars can fit underneath this thing. They had a successful Kickstarter campaign to fund it. That's from uh, Artisans Asylum Hackerspace in Boston, and they're working on that now. Uh, this project is from a, co a collaboration with Tokyo Hackerspace and um, uh, Crash Space in LA. Th after the disaster in Fukushima, the government of Japan wasn't very forthcoming with the radiation levels, so they built their own radiation detector, very cheap, and they were giving them away to anyone who wanted one. Uh, one of the troubles is, though, they didn't know what the normal background radiation was, so they decided to have this project where they give these away and it would connect with the internet and uh, they gave away several hundred of these and I think thousands by now where people drive around and automatically uploads the radiation levels and they're doing this all over the world now and anyone can use this open data for whatever they want and they call the, the project, um, um, what's it called, uh, Safecast. Safecast, it's a really cool project. Uh, one thing cool with um, Hackerspace is we can make things that are usually very expensive, but when we collaborate together, we can make things much cheaper. Like a PCR machine for uh, sequencing DNA is normally very expensive. These people at BioCurious in the San Francisco Bay Area made open PCR, which people at other hackerspaces around the world have made even better and cheaper. And this is like for $300, you can sequence your own DNA anywhere. Uh, they've since made many other things at BioCurious and other bio, uh, DIY biospaces. Uh, this one's another one from Noisebridge. It's called Code Hero. It's a game that as you play it, you learn to create your own games. And it, it's pretty intense. They had a successful Kickstarter for this, too. So um, it's just a few of the zillions of projects that I've encountered uh, from traveling around at hackerspaces around the world. And, oh, and by the way, uh, there's a hackerspace passport, which you do not need to go to a hackerspace, but um, I created that to make it more fun to get stamps from hackerspaces as you visit them around the world. And uh, um, uh, Dev, uh, DevTal uh, Hackerspace uh, from Germany has a whole bunch of hackerspace passports upstairs for, what is it, 100 uh, uh, dinar. So uh, check that out. But. Um, yeah, people come together and have created these hackerspaces and these projects for very little resources, very little money, just because people love doing this stuff. And when people get together and do what they love, amazing things happen. Um, there's lots of hackerspaces around the world. Um, and one of the, there's some things that happen at hackerspaces that are really needed on our world that aren't happening, like real education. The education systems in our planet are failing us big time. Uh, like in the United States, it's all about standardized test scores for the bureaucracy, which has absolutely nothing to do with anything about except doing well on standardized tests nothing to do with actually living a life worthwhile living. So hackerspaces have been taking up the void where people teach because they love teaching and learn because they love learning and they know what they want to learn. Uh, also, local economy happens at hackerspaces. Um, people are doing what they love and if people are doing what they love, other people love it too and small companies grow out of that and many municipalities are supporting hackerspaces because it helps local economies. There's many places in the world with depressed economies where they just put a little teeny bit of low interest loans or no interest loans um, or just uh, grants to hackerspaces and artists and now they're thriving parts of town like in Manchester, England or Allentown, Pennsylvania or even worse, Detroit. Um, and this is why there are now lots of hackerspaces on the planet. Uh, you can see North America is kind of almost obliterated with hackerspaces. Same with Europe. We need a bit more on the eastern side of things, don't we? Like here in Novi Sad. So let's talk about that more. Um, so the thing is, hackerspaces start because people like you start one. Like you! <laughs> 
and each of you. That's how it starts. It's the only way it starts. Um, <clears throat> so all hackerspaces are unique. Let me just talk about NoiseBridge a little bit. Here's a, a workshop I gave at NoiseBridge about how to use Arduino, uh, which I'm going to do Sunday here at 11 o'clock. Um, but um, NoiseBridge, we, it was started by a couple of weirdo, hippie, queer punks, and uh, so it's kind of that kind of a space. We have only one rule, which is be excellent to each other. We have no leaders, no followers. Everything is done because someone just does it. We call that duocracy. There are other hacker spaces. Oh, and all of our decisions are done by consensus. Everything at NoiseBridge is free. Uh, all of our income comes from membership dues and um, donations, but you don't need to be a member to do anything at NoiseBridge. You don't need to be a member to teach a class, to take a class, to use the tools, to come to NoiseBridge. In fact, I have plenty of keys. If anyone wants to go to San Francisco and come to NoiseBridge, ask me for a key, but you have to promise to use it. So see me after this. Um, other hackerspaces are all different. You don't have to be an anarchist, weirdo, hippie punk kind of a place like NoiseBridge. Uh, they can be totally organized with lots of rules so everyone knows what to expect. If that floats your boat, great, do it. All hackerspaces help each other regardless of whether or not uh, they're the same or not. They're, none of them are the same. They're all unique. We help each other. And that's one of the reasons, again, why hackerspaces have flourished around our planet. You know, we all need community in our lives. We need it. We wouldn't have survived on the planet if we didn't come together early in our human history to support each other, coming together to teach and share and learn tools. We also need to um, uh, use our creative expression. We all need this. Uh, nowadays, we don't need it to merely survive but we still have this deep inner need and a deep inner need for community and hackerspaces provide for both of these deep inner human needs. Um, so if you come together in a supportive community, which is there to support everyone to explore and do what you love, chances are much better that you'll be able to explore and then hopefully do what you love in your life as opposed to just going to some fucking job where you crawl out of bed to go to a job so that you can make enough money so that you can crawl into your job so you can make enough money so you can eventually crawl into bed so you can crawl out of bed to go to a job you don't like. That's an option. But there are other options, and we explore them at Hackerspaces. And um, if you explore what you love, you can share that with others and inspire them to do what they love each in their way. And in this way, the world maybe becomes a better place for each and every one of us. And that's what hackerspaces are all about. So let's start one here in Nova Sad. Thanks. <laughs> so who lives in Nova Sad here? <laughs> who wants to start a hackerspace? <laughs> Great, let's talk about it. <laughs> let's let's meet uh, let's meet now. <laughs> uh, many female members in your noise project because where I come from, that's a bit of a problem. Good question. So um, at Chaos Congress, uh, it's like fifteen percent female, which is not quite the way the uh, demographics are on our planet. Um, at NoiseBridge, we've got forty percent female. Uh, at Artisan's Asylum, which uh, made that stompy, that huge robot, that's 50-50. So um, we, we had, um, knowing that we don't live on an ideal planet, we wanted to attract everyone and make sure everyone's welcome at NoiseBridge. So we have not only soldering irons and things that you know, traditionally uh, would attract boys, but we have sewing machines that would traditionally have attracted girls. But what we found is when we have soldering irons and classes on how to use them, and sewing machines and classes on how to use them. There's people sewing, there's people uh, soldering, and it's all out in the open, and people see people sewing over there, and people see people soldering over there, and pretty soon everyone's soldering and everyone's sewing. So boys have nothing in their brain that says you can't push 
fabric through a, a sewing machine. And girls have nothing in their brain that says they can't solder stuff together or weld. And um, so when people try these things and they see that it's useful, it's fun, they do it. And that's probably why we're 40% female, uh, and we also have plenty of transsexuals as well. Everyone's welcome, and we want to be sure that everyone's welcome, because, um, you know, the world has too few opportunities for too few people, and this is part of what we wanted. So you think the key is in the equipment, or do you have anything else you do to, um, to make a diverse uh, uh, kind of community? Because we also have few with, um, foreign food. Yeah, well, um, the equipment is more symbolic, um, but it's important. You know, the hackerspaces are not about the tools, but the tools are important. It's really about the community. And if the community is one where it's from the very onset and very explicit that everyone's welcome, that's key. And so everyone's welcome regardless of gender or gender preference, sexual orientation, uh, economic background, et cetera. And we made that very explicit and written down on our wiki page and our whole website's a wiki. We also have a code of conduct that says that, um, you know, uh, uh, any kind of uh, harassment is totally unacceptable so that people know that they can be safe in our space regardless of their background. So all this together is uh, what makes it work. You know, but you have to go out specifically and recruit. Um, otherwise, people who normally, you know, like tech, people think of tech when they think of hackerspaces, but hackerspaces aren't just tech, you know. It's craft and art and all these other things too, food and uh, photography, video, music. But so much of that has been realms for boys and we want everyone to be able to do all these things, as well as boys being able to do things that they're not supposed to do. Because what are these boundaries? We're hackers. We can hack all this stuff. <laughs> we got any statistics of the comparison projects by category? Uh, projects by what? I don't have any statistics, but uh, from going around the world, I see most hackerspaces t tend to focus on tech, but uh, there are a lot of hackerspaces that focus on the art side of things and also do hack tech as well. And there's many of them that focus on mechanical things, a little more about their machine shop. That's actually how Artisans Asylum started off in Boston. Um, and then there's ones that focus primarily on DIY bio, and there have been some sort of non-geographical mobile ones that focus on food. So, but, you know, every hackerspace is going to be unique depending on the people who started it and keep it going. And so, regardless of what any other hackerspace in the world is doing or has done, if you start a hackerspace, you can make it whatever you want it to be. And as you do that, it attracts more people who fit in with the vision, which uh, makes that vision stronger, which attracts more people, which makes the vision stronger, etc. So it becomes a cool place for everybody. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. I've visited some hacker spaces and found that uh, they don't have that much problems with gender issues, but they have much more problems with uh, accepting people who are new. Uh, so they are like really reserved uh, to uh, new people and if just somebody walks off the street into a hacker space, they look at him like he's alien or not welcome. So uh, did you have the same uh, thing at Noisebridge and if you Now, Noisebridge is very different than that, and I've been to a lot of hackerspaces. A lot of hackerspaces. Here's the hackerspace passport that I created for Camp 2011, and there's stamps from hackerspaces all over the planet in this. That one filled up, and since it's open source, people in China copied it and made it better. 
vinyl cover making it Chinese style, but this one's now almost full. And, um, and then there's the one from London Hackspace with their rule number zero on the back, which is do not be on fire. If you're gonna have more than one rule, that's kind of an okay one to have, I think. Um, but this has also got a bunch, and, um, and then I just got one from the DevTal people upstairs. But um, I've never been to a hackerspace where newbies are not welcome. And when we started NoiseBridge, we wanted to be sure that it's welcoming for people of all skill levels, because that's part of what makes it work. No matter how much you know, there's things you don't know and that you can learn from other people. And no, no matter how little you know, there's probably things you know that other people don't know that you can share. And that's part of the magic of what makes hackerspaces thrive, is everyone's welcome to come and teach and learn and share amongst each other. You can also just come as an introverted geek and sit on your laptop. Um, but even people like that, um, you know, I'm an introverted geek too. Uh, I've just learned to sort of live in an extroverted world. But um, everyone's welcome. Uh, but even people who are way, way, way geeky and introverted open up because it's just full of introverted geeks. And if people, if the culture is such that it's explicit that people of all skill levels are welcome, it's a place where people can open up and really flourish in their lives in unexpected ways. And I, I would um, not want to be part of a space that's not welcoming to everybody. So as long as they follow our one rule, which is be excellent to each other. <laughs> yeah, so if you start one here, I hope it's welcoming to everybody, including people with, who know nothing. I mean, I go around the world teaching these things, these workshops where people who've never made anything in their life suddenly learn how to solder knowing that they can make things they never thought they'd be able to make, and it gives people confidence to go on and do whatever they do in their life. Uh, so, you know, that's just what I do, and other people are teaching people who are total newbies how to make their own website, or how to make, uh, develop film in a dark room, or how to make music with pure data, or whatever. Um, they're fantastic because people of all skill levels are welcome. Cool. Well, let's talk about a hackerspace in Novi Sad. Let's, let's just sit down over here and talk about this, because we have to make it happen. 